you're joining us from the Peak District. Uh, we're in the up at Derwent Valley today. Now, my YouTube feed for a couple of months now has just been flooded with videos about the Lady Bower, Derwent Dams, the Lost Villages, and the lack of water in the reservoirs down here. So we've got Lady Bower Reservoir, Derwent Reservoir, and Howden Reservoir, which is uh, ascending in that order as we go up the valley. Uh, today, we're in Lady Bower Reservoir. I did do the video uh, a couple of miles just up the valley of the Uzzelden Viaduct, the old Bamford and Howden Railway, mm -hmm. but I've not been and done any filming around the ruins or around this area while the water's been low. And that's because I've seen lots of people make videos about that. And to be perfectly honest, they can do a lot better job than I can. Uh, but Paul invited me down today, we had a free afternoon, so I thought why not come and have a look and, uh, and see what happens. So here's a map of the Upper Derwent Valley. Laderbar Reservoir is the bottom reservoir, a Y-shaped body of water. Now the A57 Snake Pass dissects the two halves of the reservoir with Ashopton Viaduct carrying the road over. Let's just have a quick fire rundown of the history of this valley. The Upper Auden Reservoir and Dam were completed in 1912. The middle Derwent Reservoir and Dam were completed in 1916. These dams are well known for their involvement in the World War II dam buster story involving the Lancaster bombers and the bouncing bombs used in the German Ruhr Valley. In a stark contrast to what we see today, in some winters we can actually see the water overspilling the top of the dams. Lederbau Reservoir is the lower of the three reservoirs and arrived quite some time later than the previous two. Construction started in 1935 and was completed in 1943 and is very well known for submerging the villages of Ashopton and Derwent, the latter of which we'll see remains of today. So just on the way through we stopped at the uh, where the Lady Bower Viaduct is and the Ashopton Viaduct. Now this is right at the south end of the Lady Bower Reservoir and this was the location of one of the former villages that was lost, uh, the village of Ashopton. So before we make our way down onto the sides of the reservoir, I just wanted just to say a few words. So this isn't a lecture or a telling off or anything like that, it's just a reminder just to be mindful when you're down there on the mud. There has been quite a lot of negative publicity around the ruins in the last few weeks. And I have seen fingers pointed at the increase in social media exposure that's been given to the ruins. It is easy to get stuck down there and the ground, as I found out, was very unpredictable. And since we went down, there has been quite a bit of rain, so I suspect the mud has got even softer. So just mind how you go and stay safe. It's the deer went flowing then. This looks a little bit more healthy now, doesn't it? Deer went down. Although the village of Derwent's gone, you do still get some remaining buildings that are above what, I suppose what is essentially the, the water line, water line of the flood. Nice gate posts, a couple of gate posts. Looking on the maps, this is where it's, um, it's noted as a vicarage. So here's the National Library of Scotland map of Derwent and uh, a picture paints a thousand words there, doesn't it? So we're going to be walking through the village from the top. So take note of that meandering brook there, that's Mill Brook. We're going to be following that down to work towards the River Derwent. So we're on the little recess in, in the reservoir now where we're going to get down onto the side of the, of the, the old village. Notice here, Derwent, the village of the dams, the mural. It is a bit of a breezy day today. We are going to be out in the open, so do apologise. But you've probably seen all the photographs of this already. There have been quite, this has had so much publicity. It always does when there's a shortage of water. But here's the old, here's the old brook. 1901. So Paul's the font of all knowledge on this. He's filled up my Facebook 
feed with posts about this for weeks now. Can't move for posts on um, on the Lost Villages of uh, Derwent Reservoir. But there's that little bridge. So we can see the keystone in the middle there. Got to be really careful, you know. We've had a, a bit of rain and it has made the ground really, really soft and a little bit unstable. And I'll be amazed if I get through today without being on my backside. The water looks so clear. That's looking back down there to the main body of the reservoir. So this mill brook would have flowed into the Derwent in the middle of the village. See the old walls. Now there is an irony to today's visit. You'll notice we've got his raincoats on. We're making the video about a drought, basically. And it seems to have rained for the last four explorers that I've been out and done. We were in Connors, we were getting soaking last week alone. And as soon as we parked the car, as soon as I, as soon as we literally pulled up, it started to rain today. But it has just seemed to have held off a little bit. You try to put yourself in the shoes of the people who lived in these villages. That, there's that harrowing photograph of them going about their daily lives while they're building that um, viaduct in Ashipton. Um, above their, uh, just above their heads. Just try and put yourself in their shoes. Just imagine how you'd feel in that situation. I don't think you would have a problem where you lived. You're like literally the highest point in Bolsover, aren't you? You can see the texture of the ground, how dry it's been. But I can tell you, this is anything but put firm at the moment. And you can see little bridges, little bits of brickwork, pipes coming out at the side, all the way along, where there would have been things draining into this little brook. I love the old trees. I mean, these trees must have been huge that have obviously been cut down before it was flooded. But the stumps are still, are still in place. They've not, I mean, they're rotting away, but they've held their own, haven't they, for all this time. It's starting to rain again now. So we're going out into the open now, so it's probably going to be a little bit windier. So this was the old, the old church. Quite iconic images of, uh, of that spire, which was demolished, I think in the 1940s. So this was the entrance. Yeah, you've got your wall, your brick wall here, and then your steps, what went up into the church there, where them, like, coping stones are. So much stuff, isn't it? It's difficult to know where to look. And there, you can see, you can still see the tarmac path what went down out to the churchyard, down to the road. Ah. More or less visualised where it went. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder why they didn't reuse more of the stone. Wonder why they didn't move it. And I mean, I know they moved the bridge, didn't they? they were... Yeah, they must have took some stone away because they were a great steeple, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was just demolished, wasn't it? Yeah. And left in a pile, from what I understand. Yeah. That was a year after they flooded it, weren't they? Because people were coming out to it, so they demolished it for safety reasons. And the keystone is here, isn't it? Yeah, it is 1867. In terms of churches, is isn't old, is it? I mean, we, we, we walked down railway lines that, that were built before this church. Just spend hours just looking at all the stones, couldn't you? Just try to. It's just like a real life jigsaw puzzle in front of you, isn't it? I can see why people get excited about this. They moved the graves to Bamford Church. 
the grave, what the graves, the bodies were yeah. exhumed, yeah. taken to so Bamfordshire. No here. So here's that path that went down from the, was it from the cemetery you said? From the church? Yeah, from the church, through the cemetery. Just, right. Onto the road. So looking back up the path to the church, to the church now then. There is just ornate stonework everywhere you look, isn't it? Seems so, just seems so wasteful. Stood by the school in front of the church, just on the uh, the side of the, the water's edge. Now the ground is very soft down here, so I don't think I'm going to be able to get much further. But look at that old tree stump there, just rotting away. See, the ground feels fine one second and then the next y y your next footstep you're just you yeah you, your foot's completely gone you're trying to stick to the to the stone walking on the stones which aren't haven't got much more grip than the uh, the mud to be honest we're down so there's them gate posts entrance to the Entrance to the church. So I presume that's the top of a gate post or something. I mean, they'd be going for a fortune in B&Q these days, wouldn't they, those? Fast forward seven days and Paul paid another visit. Now look how much that water level's gone down, I'm looking at them posts. So there's them two gate posts from this side, looking across back over the mill brook, all the trees lined in it there, just looking back to another little bridge. And we can see the, uh, the pump house just over the other side. Hopefully go and have a, a look at that on the way back. But I've seen people get confused about what that is, calling it old far an old farm building or, or something like that, but there is actually another one of those, another example, pretty much identical, just further up, if you're walking down the path from, uh, from Ashipton. And there's also, there's also one very similar, if not the same, um, just in the woods near Grindleford Station. Here's another little stone arch bridge that we could see, the top of the arch just poking through. And when Paul went back a week later, look how much more of the archway is now visible. I absolutely love the way that brook just winds its way. And it's, it's quite obvious it's the original course because there's the lot of retaining walls. It's quite a sobering thought to think that these communities were lost because of the development and growth of the nearing big cities. I think that's a fact that you shouldn't really forget, especially I've lived in Sheffield the majority of my adult life, or well, the majority of my life. And uh, I think it's just, always keep that in your mind that these places were lost for the benefit of others. So we've not been able to get over that, that brook. It's been, I mean, there is ways across, but the mud's just too deep. It's really not worth, it's not worth risking to be honest. So we've just backtracked a little bit up, just to go across this bridge. You can see Paul just walking across it there. So all of stuff that's ruined, we've got an old ruined road up here. It's quite intriguing, so this would have, was a road down into the village. We can climb up here, a shortcut. So here's the old road going off, meeting the existing existing road. So still got tarmac on here. So gravel, and there it would have gone up in that direction, just past those vicarage and those gate posts. And we can see it curving round 
the wall hugging the side of the road as well. I think I could do a little splash of ACF 50, couldn't it? That? Yeah, Paul's just been pointing out. It's, it's like a red brick wall, doesn't it? Down, mm. down here, old red brick. What's that? Was that be sandstone? Could be. Possibly. And then another wall further up with an arch, halfway down it there. That carried the road down to the. So that, road. so that was the road on top of that retaining wall there, was it? Yeah, that one. What we pulled on earlier on the the carriage. Ah. That'd have been, when I first saw it, I thought, is it somewhere like they tied horses up or something like that? Probably way off the mark. So we're leaving the little village behind us and we're just wondering if this is going to be walkable down here down towards Derwent Hall so this this bit of fish pond on the right hand side still actually ironically still looks like um, like the shape of a fish pond doesn't it yeah. in a garden just a big one um, walkway I assume down to the hall there yeah. and, and then the gardens on the right hand side the texture on this tree is amazing and you can see the rings as well but So views overlooking Deer went all for me. We did try. Wonder if we can walk up the path, but it is. It's really boggy. The, the ground is literally wobbling around you. So the next load of footage you're going to see is of the old Derwent Hall, which dates back to 1672. As you can see from this overlay of the old maps, it should be underwater. As well as being a hall, it's also been a youth hostel and a school until it was demolished in 1940s just before the flooding of the valley so I believe this would have been the chapel it's the different colour stones window sill oh window sill quite a few of them wow. the chapel or the hall Um, this is on another level. This. We've got some. That one's got a hole in it, that one behind you. That's cave. That's got a bit of pattern to it. That's top of the fire. That. Right. Do you think that's sat on top yeah, of that's that? that? Top of that fireplace. Top of the fireplace. Now, I've seen photos of all this. It's good to see it in person, but that's amazing. Isn't it? I mean, the villages. I mean, this is just crazy. I mean, you can still see the pit in the bottom of that fire. That is amazing. This is this is a piece of resistance, isn't it? That's left standing. This, I mean, it's not actually a gate box, is it? Like a It's amazing looking back at all those old photographs, just trying to piece together exactly where you are. And amazingly, if we borrow this old postcard, we can see the top of that post there that's still standing today. These bricks are becoming pretty lethal in this rain, aren't they? Mm. 
So it's the entrance to do it all, right? Yeah, the front entrance. You can see photos with the steps on. The steps long gone, I assume now. They might be under there. I can't go down any further, that's yeah, ankle deep. Look at them blue, bla uh, blue glazed bricks there. Lovely that. They could do a little bit of buffing up. Tile. Sorry, tiles, not bricks. Sorry. No, actually, they are bricks. They're full. They're full. I thought they were just tiles, but they are full bricks. No. So you say fireplace, top of the fireplace. Yeah. Some piece of stone, isn't it, that? And the two two supports. I can really see why people keep coming back. You could come here every day for a year and still find something new. So much to look at. Is hammering it down now. I hope the rain's not getting on the lens too much. So, I mean, it's a huge footprint of a site, isn't it? It's just huge. But there's. Uh, I was hoping to get down there, but it's just so that mud. It's just. Oh, it's an absolute quadmire, isn't it, down there? I wonder what's actually inside there like what's underneath if, if there's if it's infilled or just full of water i mean you it's going to be too dark to see on camera but there is uh, there is water down there just below the archway be careful these uh, these stones on the side of here aren't aren't very secure but if i can get a view down there down into the bottom you can see the steps any better so we can see the photograph seven days apart again. And this one is seven days later when Paul visited again. So look how much lower the water is and how much more you can see down under that arch. This big metal pole sticking up out of the ground. I think it was a, a water park. That's what I read. I don't know if it is or not. I don't know if you can do that all You think water pipe? I read yeah. water, I would know. would make sense. Is it or not? No, it's just completely. Sense. Yeah, it's corroded up at the end. All these bricks. They're red, aren't they, stuff? So it's when I was when I was over the other side, when I did Birch and Lee, there we go. That's a white one. This is the. The ones that say near Leeds, aren't they? Yeah, um, yeah they, they had a... I can't remember the name of the brickworks, but it was a Barnsley brickworks, I remember. I was trying to find a full brick to, uh, to piece them together. So these are Leeds, that was Barnsley, the other side. The water off the lens would help. Finally, finally Iron Company near Leeds. So they're really smooth, those bricks. It's like they've, there's been a... Uh, Concrete, early form of plaster or something over the top. If that's an opening for something, or if it's just damaged. This is ornamental, isn't it? That wall's got a, a pattern on. Or is it just random? I don't know, it's got it's plaster on it. Isn't it again? Your four. Well these have got tiles on, on these. We're just wondering what these blocks yeah. like that big row of small rooms. It's like, yeah. Pantries, possibly. Well there's tiles, so it's gotta be something that needed needed cleaning or hygiene wise. Or Slate, nice. slate slabs on this side. Yeah, you just yeah to keep keep something cool. Larder yeah. is this slate as well? That's got an arch on it. 
So that's probably a. Uh, That, that's that's probably a staircase going down to, down to another cellar, isn't it? Yeah. Because that other cellar's only just here. Yeah. So it's probably either another cellar or another entrance to the to the lower. It might even be a labyrinth for corridors and rooms underground. So we're on our way out to this stonework. What's this called? Lover's seat. Lover's seat. Lover's seat. Now this. Whoop! Nearly over again. This this is. To say this is the furthest out of the water, this is in really, really good condition, isn't it? This will spend a lot more time underwater than the rest of the a lot of the rest of the ruins that we've seen. Hall in front of us, village in the distance. I mean, look at the size of that, the footprint of that hall. You see it from up here. Massive. It's a fantastic piece. Brickwork, like, isn't it? Love to see a photograph of, of what this, what this was when it was still in place. So we'd have had down here. We can see the channel sneaking off here. River Derwent would have been in the bottom. Someone's graffitied that 1989 and 1990. So just have one last look from up here before we start. Heading back, there's so much more you could you could see down here. I mean, I don't think we're going to get across to the pump pass at the other side. It is. It's nearly five o'clock, so we're going to be losing the light very soon. Cheers for Paul for his uh, expertise. He's uh, he's shown me around today. That was absolutely fast, fantastic. Looking around, day went all especially. So a walk back down to Fair Elms now. Back to where we're parked. Nice warm car get dried off a little bit so as always cheers for watching take care i'll see you soon